My mother-in-law has this concertina door that was falling to bits and needed replacing. She said she thought she had a glazed wooden bifold door in the shed somewhere, so I went hunting for it and I found it, dusted off the cobwebs, and in this video I'm going to be trying to rescue it and make it fit, but there were three major problems to overcome, which I'll talk through one by one. First, it was full of woodworm, and to me it looked like some of the woodworm could still be active. You can see here there's a few holes that appear to have dust in, which usually means they're still inside, eating away at the wood. The wood still felt solid enough though, so I removed the doorknob and then started sanding away the old finish on this door back to bare wood so that I can apply some woodworm treatment and get it to absorb properly into the wood. The second of three problems was that the door was too wide to fit the opening, so I'm going to make some rip cuts with the track saw. It made sense to cut this before treating for woodworm, as it'll expose the bare wood on the edges without me needing to sand them. I think I'm probably really pushing the limit here in terms of the amount of material that I'm removing from the width of these doors, as the glazed panels in these doors really need a decent amount of structural integrity around them, and I'm removing about 18mm from each of the styles on each of the doors, leaving them at only about 24mm wide. Cutting the edges revealed the true extent of some of the woodworm damage. I didn't see any bugs living inside though. I bought some of this woodworm killer and applied it all over the doors paying particular attention to the areas where the holes were, and I applied it three times in total, letting it dry in between each coat. I can then clean up those track saw cuts with a few swipes from the hand plane. I've mixed up some all-purpose filler to fill the woodworm holes, and this will be fine on the faces of the doors, on the edges, I would have preferred to use one of the two-part fillers because they dry much harder and they're more durable. But I'm on a tight budget for this one, so I'm just going to use what I've got. And once this is all sanded down and sealed with a couple of coats of primer and a coat of paint, I'm sure it'll hold just fine. So on to the third problem with the doors. They are too short for the opening, so I need to add some timber to the bottom. First though I need to rip a clean edge so that I can get a nice tight glue join. I needed about 34mm of thickness and I have some offcuts from some scaffold boards here that are 38mm thick. So I cut them to length at the mitre saw, planed a square edge onto them, and then I can get some glue on and I'm just going to secure these in place with screws until the glue dries. I can then plane the faces flush. By this time my filler was dry so I can sand all the excess filler away. And I used my air blower to get rid of all of the dust. I'm going to use some of this Zinza bin to prime it. I love this stuff. Zinza aren't a sponsor by the way and it's quite expensive but as it's a shellac based paint it sticks to absolutely anything so I don't need to worry about removing every trace of the old finish that's on these doors or waste time sanding the beadings by hand. It also blocks staining from things like knots in wood bleeding through the paint over time. For the side of the glass that isn't etched, I can simply paint it on without worrying about carefully cutting in, as I can scrape this away later. But for the side of the glass that is etched, I used some masking tape to keep the paint off it. Just one coat of primer looked pretty good, so I went on to applying this satin wood white paint, using a brush for the intricate bits and finishing with the mini roller, which leaves a nice finish. At this point the glue has dried on the bottom bits that I added so I can now remove the screws as I'll need to cut these doors down later and I don't want to cut through the screws. I need to buy some hardware so that I can hang the doors but some of the ones I've looked at online are only rated up to 14 kilograms per door and I'm not sure whether they're counting a door as one part or both parts. And these doors are pretty heavy as they're glazed so I'm going to weigh them on my parcel scales. Each door is about 8 kilograms, so to play it safe I found a kit on Amazon which said maximum system weight was rated at 60 kilograms. So that's the best option and I've placed an order. Meanwhile I can remove the masking tape and then denib the doors with some 400 grit ready for a final coat of paint. And I can scrape the paint off the non-etched side of the glass. Once 
Once the hardware arrived, I could get the hinges fitted to the edges of the door. And I'm not sure if these type of hinges would usually be rebated into the door or not. The old hinges that I removed had not been rebated, but I'm going to do it anyway, mainly because if I can get the doors closer together, it might save me from having to rip down another couple of millimeters from the edges of the doors later when it comes to fitting. And as I said earlier, I'd already removed more from the doors than I was really comfortable with. I used the router and then chiseled the rest of the waste away and then screwed them on. I got the doors positioned next to each other making sure that they were flush at the top edge and then I can mark up where to drill holes for the other leaf of the hinges. And then I can just check that they're flush. I went looking for a new handle to put onto the door and a retired kitchen fitter gave me a bunch of handles recently which are all new in their packaging. I chose this crackle glaze round handle which has an antique brass cup. It seemed like the one that would best match the decor in their house. So my instructions say that my doors need to be 37 millimeters less than the height of the opening and each of the two doors need to be the width of the opening divided by two minus six millimeters. Now I'm not sure whether to rely on my measurements and cut these here in the workshop or take the door to the house and then cut them while I'm there. I'm feeling brave so I think I'm going to cut them now. So by this point the doors should be the right size for the opening minus space for the hardware at the top and bottom and a couple of millimeters either side of the door. To fit the hardware I needed an 11mm drill bit and I didn't have one so I had to buy one of those too. I need to drill some 30mm deep holes so I used the masking tape trick and they need to be 32mm in from the edges. And these pins just get hammered in place, a locator pin at the top, a plastic runner at the top too which I managed to drill in really wonky but that shouldn't matter and this one on the bottom which has a height adjustment nut in it. I can cut my aluminium track to the width of the opening. And these plastic end caps get bolted in place to the track. Now I just need to get the door fitted. And because this is such a tight space, there's no room for a tripod. So I'm trying something new here. This is an action camera that I've bolted onto a visor of my baseball cap. So you can get a Keith's eye view of what's going on. First, I can get the old door removed, which wasn't difficult. This piece needs to be secured to the door jam at the bottom. And that just gets secured with two screws. I want to install my track at the top the same distance in as the bit I just added at the bottom. Then I can get the door lifted in place first trying to fit the locator pin into the hole at the top. It was difficult to see and by the time I had it in I couldn't see what was going on at the bottom. And this took a few attempts and Rhea helped me by being my eyes at the bottom of the door and then it was in. and I can use the included spanner just to lift it up. And that's the door fitted. I think considering how it started, it turned out pretty well and Ria's mum and dad were really happy with it and I got a nice steak dinner while I was there, so I was happy too. So this is one of those jobs where for someone in the trade, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense when you consider the time put into it. It'd work out more efficient just to buy a new door that was the right size and fit it because for the cost of labor, for the time I spent treating it for woodworm, adjusting the size, priming and painting and fitting it, plus the cost of the materials, you could buy and fit a brand new door and be done with it. But for the DIYer or a person with a few hours to kill who wants to do a favor for his mother-in-law, it's a pretty simple job. And for me, it's always rewarding making something good out of something that's laying around gathering dust and also saving it going to landfill. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel and get exclusive content, early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos, you can find links to YouTube channel membership and my Patreon page in the description box below, or you can make a one-off donation via PayPal. Thank you for watching.